Well, it was a great village when I was a boy growing up because you had a hardware shop, you had a forge, you had a chemist, six pubs, three draper shops, which you haven't got today. You know, it was, everything was catered for. Little town. That time there was a pile of pubs, as the previous speaker said there. The Armstrong shop was a big hardware store. It done wholesale, it done re wholesale and retail. It sold everything. They had a store up here just at the end of this building. No, down here at this end, it was an old hangar in the war years. And uh, it was, that'd be the First World War, really. And Armstrong's, it must have been set up in the First World War, but Armstrong's bought it and they used it as a store. In that store, he had everything. Flour, all kinds of feeding stuff. You had mower machines, you had ploughs, you had timber, you had cement. Anything you wanted, you got it. And they had a crusher for crushing corn and barley. So the farmers would bring in a bag of corn or a bag of barley and get it crushed and have crushed oats or crushed barley going home. There was a weaver shop. There was people weaving. There was a small bakery. There was a saddler. Three of the publicans, pubs, also run a grocery bar, grocery, grocery store. It's a soul tea, everything. Frank McGuire, Frank Eddie's, we call it, Eddie's Bear, it's called now. He, he sold, he had his own packets for his own, he packed his own tea. His own tea packet was, right, what was it, McGuire? What was on it, Paddy? Uh, Eddie McGuire. Eddie McGuire, right. He packed his own tea. And then Bushman's, they had done groceries, and Charlie Donald's done Bush done groceries. And Paddy Mooney done the bicycles, and Paddy Mooney before that done the traps and the horse carts. And still on the fair green in Black Lion, the concrete basis in the shape of a horse cart wheel and a NAS cart wheel in concrete is still there for shoeing the wheels. The concrete is still there, buried now, and I often had a mind to get in with a dig or something and see could I resurrect them. And uh, Paddy Mooney made the wheels from scratch, every bit of the wheel, and he shod them. And he set the wheel down on this concrete base, he had all the timbers put together, he made the shoeing. The shoeing for the horse cart came in 20 foot lengths. He cut the length he wanted, he heated it in the forge and bent it into a round shape for the wheel, perfectly round shape. He put the, the wheel, he put the, the, the wheel, the, 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 the shoeing, what we call the shoeing, is a steel rim that went on the timber. He put it down on the concrete base. The concrete base was the exact shape of the rim, you know, completely round. He lit a fire of turf round the rim. Now anybody getting cart wheel shod in those days had to bring an ass and two creels of turf to light the fire, to heat the rim. When the rim was perfectly red hot, he dropped his wheel into it and then got a pile of buckets of water and cooled the rim, the rim immediately and that tightened onto the cart and that was the shoeing on the horse cart. Paddy Mooney done that on the Fergin up until the early 50s. And the two bases are still on the fair again, if they could be resurrected. The old forge is gone and it's derelict. And sitting in the place of the old forge now is a 45-foot steel container on the unapproved road of Black Lion.